So what we so far discussing is just like we know in some applications we will be interested in knowing a priori whether this state is going to be positive recurrent, null recurrent or uh, it is going to be transient right like in the in the insurance kind of applications I we just discussed last time we said that it is important to know whether this is a recurrent state like if I am going to go bankrupt. Uh, that the state that I am going to become bankrupt is going to be recurrent, I do not want to be in that business, right. So, a priori, if you know or uh, if you could model all the system, you want to quickly identify whether this state, this state is going to be positive recurrent, null recurrent, or whatever it is. So, we are just now stating what are these results that you can, uh, what you can say about that just by looking your Markov chain. Right, see, so like all this characterization was only simply based on your FJJ values, right? FJJ values, which you can compute from basically your transition probability matrix. So, your transition probability matrix is basically characterizing your Markov chain. So, if I tell you my Markov chain, that you can quickly come up with your transition probability matrix. From that, you can compute this FJJs and try to identify, okay, what are these states how they behave like. Now, based on this you can uh, try to understand how your uh, uh, things are. Like for example, your transition probabilities, you may start with one transition probability matrix and for that you observe that okay, these three states are transient and these are recurrent and all. But uh, you notice that uh, I am going to be in recurrent state most of the time, so this is a bad case, I do not want to get into this. So, let us change my Markov chain. Changing Markov chain is equivalent to saying that, okay, let us consider these parameters. You want to look at a different set of parameters that is like you changing your design or like you changing, okay, let us instead of uh, starting with this much capital, maybe let us start with another set of capital or something like that. And then you analyze based on that, okay, what are the states? which are going to be positive, recurrent and transient. Then you will see that, okay, in this I find that my recurrent states are less, maybe this looks like a bit safer bet and then I want to maybe go with this. So, what we are just trying to do is given this set of inputs, given one description of Markov chain. The Markov chain as long as somebody tells you, okay, these are the transitions happening, you have a Markov chain, you are identifying. But that Markov chain, it can change if you change the parameters, right, your transition prob probabilities. Once you have a new set, you can do the same thing. So, you can do this analysis for any given transition probability matrix and based on that, you can say maybe like you say that, okay, this transition probability looks like it will lead to a situation where things are less risky. And maybe as a designer or the guy who is actually going to implement them, maybe he will see how he can get those parameters, okay, fine. But for this computation of all this uh, null, transient and null recurrent, we are really no, no, do not need to worry about uh, my initial trans probability. I only need to worry about transition probability matrix because as you seen, when I was trying to do all this calculation, I stay given this state. I kind of fix my state and from there I am trying to analyze. So, the initial distribution is not affecting much, right, because you are already fixing a starting state and after that you are analyzing. Initial distribution only affects in which state you are going to start from, but that you are already fixed. Now, what is only going to decide how your future is going to evolve is your transition probability matrix. So, that is why I am saying to analyze this, you know, all you need to know is only transition probability matrix. Okay. Uh, now, we know that we have this different states as of now you have classified them into two broad categories transient, recurrent and further 
positive recurrent and null recurrent. Now, is it possible that all my possible states I can group into these classes or like let us say I can group it to some classes and uh, what is the property of each of this class. So, let us try to understand that through what we call as communicating classes. Okay, let us uh, define something. So, let us take a Markov chain where the state space is some countable set okay, as we already as we always denoted by S as I mean I am again denoting it by S which is countable. Now, we are going to say that So, let us take a DTMC with countable set of states. Now, take any state J and take another state I. I am going to say that J is reachable from I. That means, I am going to hit state J starting from, from state I. If there exist n positive such that this n step transition is the probability of n step transition is going to be strictly positive. And in that case, I am going to denote that i goes to j that is from i, I can reach state j. See as long as what all I need is to reach j from i is at some point, at some time. I should be able to reach it with some positive probability. Okay. Right now this n could be very large, but that is fine. As long as I can do it in some time, that is fine. Now we are going to say that you take two states i and j. If I can reach j from i and vice versa, like also if I start from j at some point I am go back to state i. If that happens, then I am going to say that state i and j communicate. Okay. So, if i is reachable from j and j is reachable from i, then I am going to call i and j communicate. Okay. And that communication symbol, I am going to use it as this double arrowed line. Okay. When I say j is reachable from i, I am going to use single arrow taking i to j and when i and j are communicate, I will use this one. Okay. Now, this is a relation, right? What is this relation? This is a 
communicate relation. Now we can show that this relation is equivalence relation. So, how many of you know equivalence relation? What are the properties? Reflexive, symmetric, transitive property. What is reflexive property? Self? Okay, so reflexive property. Does this relation satisfy reflexive property? So, then for that, what I need to check? I going to itself, right? So, if this is the case, what I need to show? I is reachable from I and again I is reachable from I. To, to show that, what I need to show? There exists some n positive, uh, sorry, n greater than or equals to 0 so that I can go from I to I with positive probability. What is that n? 1 or 0? Zero? 0, zero right? Because P i i equals to 1 by our definition. If you are in i, you go to there in 0 time with problem. This that is the meaning of P i i 0. That is what we have defined like, right? So, that means with probability 1, if you are in the state, in 0 state, you will be there in 0 at the round. So, this trivially holds. Now, second is symmetric. What does this mean? J then this implies right? Is this true? So, what is I mean this is so, what is I? Let us take I communicates with J means right I is reachable from J and J is reachable from I. So, that means there exists some positive probability, uh, some positive finite time in which I should be able to reach one from the other, right? And that is same as. Uh, so, here you start from I and go to J, and then he, when you look at the other direction, you start from J to I. And just do I mean the same thing here. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, this is also other direction. If you this here, this is also. I mean, in this case, we just need to argue that this implies this. If you start with this, then you can say that this implies this. Now, what is the next? So, what is how to show that? Is this true? So, how we are going to show this? So, let us show one direction like I communicates with K. So, I communicates with J means in some finite steps I go from I to J and again J communicates with K means in another finite step with positive probability I go from J and K. So, if you take this product I know that in this many rounds at least with positive probability I go from I to K and similarly the opposite direction. So, this relation is an equivalence relation. So, what is the property of an equivalence relation? This relation partitions, but the thing is it partitions your class. So, you have this state space S, this relation if you apply it is going to partition your S into what you are going to call as equivalence classes.
So that means all the uh, states within when you have partitions and if you take one particular partition in a way all the states in that partitions are going to be equivalent that is what we call as equivalent class and here all this uh, we have so many classes so we are going to call them as equivalent classes okay fine we have some more definitions once you have a equivalence relation this is clear that it partitions now equivalence class is just like the classes we have in this partition we are going to just call them equivalence classes okay so proof for this work out yourself just uh, ensure that uh, you will not get any overlapping uh, sets okay okay now let xn is on s okay so let's say i have a dtmc with transition probability matrix P. Okay, then so we are going to as we said S is going to be partitioned by this equivalence class and the different classes we are going to get we are going to call it as communicating classes okay because we know that each pair in that particular class or a particular partition is going to communicate with each other right so we call them as communicating class classes now you take a communicating class So if you are going to take one communicating class and you are going to take one element in that communicating class and take state which is outside this communicating class.
okay and if let us say i belongs to this communicating class c and j is outside this communicating class if p i j is equals to 0 then we are going to call this communicating class c as closed that means the probability of u going from any state of this to outside state of this class is going to be 0. That means you are not going basically outside of this class to any state. So, you are that is the kind of closed class you have. And uh, if this does not hold this property, then we are going to call it as open communicating class. Okay. Now, we further say that the transition probability P is going to be irreducible if there is only one communicating class. That means, entire state space is just one communicating class right and uh, in this case. So, and, and this, this case we say the Markov chain itself is irreducible. Okay, again to define this communicating classes all what I need to know is this enough if I know my transition probability matrix? Yes, right because to define this I need to know all these n step transition probability matrix, but we are, we are in the case of time homogeneous Markov chains for this this P i j s n step transition probability can be obtained from my one step transition probability matrix. So, all these properties that I have defined that this relation whether it uh, the uh, and uh, whether my class is going to be communicating and whether my class this communicating class is closed or it is going to be open all I need to know is just my transition probability matrix from that itself I can define all these things. And now whatever the transition probability I am going to deal with I am going to call it as irreducible if that leads to me only one communicating class. So, that my state space is not going to be partition it is just going to be one communicating class. So, once I say one communicating class I am should be reachable from one state to another state within that communicating class. So, that is why I am going to call it as irreducible you cannot partition into two parts if that is the case. So, in that case we are just calling our Markov chain itself is irreducible. Okay, a quick example on this. Let us say I have some states like this where you can go from here, go from here, go from here, go from here and also go from here. So, the, the points where I have put this arrows that means, these transitions are possible with positive probability where the link does not exist that means, that transition is happening with 0 probability. So, let us call these states 1, 2, 3, 4. So, how many states are there here? 4 states and how many communicating classes are there here? What are those communicating classes? 1 and 2 because I am able to reach 1 to 2 and also 2 to 1 and what is the other communicating class 3 to 4 right. This also I am able to reach one from each other here. And now is this communicating class a closed communicating class? So, this is one class let us call this C 1 and this is called C 2. Is this communicating class a closed one? Why is that? Yeah, we can go with positive probability from a state in this class to a outside state C2. Whereas, this C2 is going to be a closed communicating sorry it is a closed one yes right because we are not going anywhere outside. So, what if if I add another states here and uh, allow this to happen. So, in this case if I add this will this 5 becomes goes inside C 2 
but uh, can I reach from 5 to 1? So, I can go here with positive probability or from there I can go here right. In that case I, I will include phi also in that. But suppose if I remove one link here. It is a that can become another itself a class right with just one element in that and in this case 1 and 2 is going to be closed one. It is not going to be closed one right because it can escape from this two to a state which is outside this class. No, we are saying closed this one. We are going to say closed if it do not have any escape route to go outside uh, outside a state with some positive probability. So, in this case when I wrote this right, if, do you have any escape route to be outside go outside to stake state other than 1 and 2? You go 1 and 2 and then 1 and 2 you may just be like that right, you will not possibility. And here there is a possibility for you that you escape from being in C1, you can go to here right because there is positive probability. Now, if I just say there is I add 1 and then let you go there, then you are able to escape from this class. So, that is why it is no more closed. Okay, now comes it is called class property theorem. If there is only one thing, what is there? To define closeness, it is just going to be closed, right? There is only one state in that, and the definition uh, uh, becomes kind of uh, vacuous here. It is just one state, and you have to go into that state. Okay. So when I say it comes to this state and it is not going anywhere, means it remains in this state always. It is just staying in that, not moving anywhere. Okay. Now. The states in a So, this theorem is stating that the communicating class we have will be such that all the states in a communicating class are going to be just one type. They are all other going to be all transient are going to be all null recurrent are going to be all positive recurrent. It is not possible that you have a communicating class that will have some states to be recurrent and some other states to be positive recurrent or null recurrent. It is going to be either one of them. Okay. So, let us quickly look into this why this is the case. Suppose let us take on communicating class and let us take let us uh, C be a communicating class. And take i j belongs to C. So, if i j belongs to C, what I know? Let me get it as Q.
but I know there exist R and S such that P J K of R is going to be positive and P K J of S is going to be positive, right? This is by definition. If I and J belongs to the same communicating class, it must be the case that I am going to go from J to K with positive probability in some finite steps. And similarly, I should go from K to J in some finite step with positive probability. Now, suppose now I want to claim that if I assume that J is transient, I want to prove that then K is also transient. And if I assume J to be positive recurrent, then I want to show that then K is also positive recurrent. And if J is null recurrent, then K is also null recurrent. So, let us see why that is the case. Okay, let us first look into the case where I want to go from j to j in this much steps r plus n plus s. This r and s I am going to be take this whatever this value. So, n is variable for me, any n. Now, what is this? This is probability that x r plus n plus j sorry s is equals to j given you are going to start from x naught equals to j, right? This is the meaning. Now, what I will do is I will instead of going from state j from the beginning to again state j in r plus n plus n steps, I will want to reach this while going to while uh, going to some other some states in between also. So, let us further condition this by saying that R n plus s equals to j. What is the conditioning I want to add? X r equals to k then x r plus n is equals to Given x naught equals to j. So, what I want here is yes, instead of directly going here, you I also want it to be first reach state k in the first r steps, subsequently in the next r n plus n steps that is r plus nth round, I want to again hit state k, and from there in the next n steps that is r plus n plus s round I want it to state j. So, is this probability is going to be lower bound for this? Yes, right because I added these two extra conditions on this. I am basically asking this Markov chain to go through this special state at these steps, not just looking at uh, the final step here. So, if you just now apply the chain rule here, what you will get is So, I already applied uh, the chain rule and the Markov property here and by definition the first term is going to be P J K in R rounds then P K K in N rounds and then P R L going to be j j. Now, this is k here. 
this is going to be k j in s rounds. It is correct. So, I have just applied chain rule and apply Markov property and this is just by definition. And now, what we have basically done is P J J R plus N plus S is going to be less than or equals to P J K R P K K in N steps and then P K J in N steps. Now, I want to use this property. First thing you can check that p j j of n you are going to be p j j of n plus s this I am simply going to take n this is not equals to 1 here and this one here. So, this is because I am just taking this this guy is a lower bound sorry this guy I have a lower bounded and then summing it over all possible ends. And now further I am going to lower bound this by this inequality which I have obtained here. So, here s is the variable which is r and s are fixed and I know that this p j k r and p k j s both are strictly positive quantities. So, now let us use the property that we have stated in a theorem. Suppose if I assume j is going to be transitive, let us say j, let us assume j is transitive. sorry transient. So, suppose if I assume j is transient what I know about this quantity as n goes to infinity? We just know it is to be finite right. I know that if my state j is transient this is going to be finite right and I know that this quantity here is some positive quantity and this quantity here is again some positive quantity. If that is the case then what I can say about this quantity? This is also finite right. Then what did we say in the theorem? If that the theorem when the summation p i j n is finite if and only if j is transient right. That theorem was if and only if case. So, now if I assume this quantity to be finite let that is following making assumption that j is transient then I am already concluding that this guy is also finite. What does this imply? What is transient? So, that implies k is also transient. So, what if I take any two states j and k in my class what we are concluding is if j is transient so is k. So, it must be the case that any states in this communicating class they must all be transient right ok. So, now let us look at the case where i is sorry let us look at the case where j is now uh, you want to look at null recurrent? Let me see what I want to look at. Okay, now let us say null recurrent.
Now we are going to say that if J is null recurrent, then we are going to show that K is also going to be null recurrent. Okay. Suppose let us say J is null recurrent and if I assume that that implies K is transient, but then I am contradicting my first statement, right. If suppose K is transient, then it must be the case that J must be also transient, but I am assuming that J is null recurrent. So by this contrapositive argument, this cannot be the case. So J could be either null recurrent or positive recurrent. So let us see what it is. So we have to then use the another result we have used where uh, instead of looking at the sum, we look at their averages. Okay. So let us try to look at the average. And then this I am going to write it as 1 by n. We just we have few steps we will be done. Okay, what I am doing here is basically I am taking this 1 by n and the summation of n terms here that is the average of the first n sums here and then in this I am going to drop out all the terms before r plus s and looking at the sum beyond that. So basically here I am assuming that n is large. It is at least r plus s right that is why it is starting from this I am only having few terms here that is why it is a lower quantity and then I am just re-indexing it. So instead of starting from m r plus 1 I am going to start from n l equals to 0 and then re-indexing these quantities and also okay when l is 0 this is going to be yeah I am just re-indexing these quantities equals to this quantity and then I am going to use this relation that I have already got that is L equals to 0 to N what I have got C J J of R C K K of N and C K J what did I do? Here and then C K of G. Yes. Okay. So this we have already shown that this can be lower bounded like this. Now I am going to do a little bit manipulation. I will pull out this term and this term outside. So this is minus R plus S, right? C K K of L times one by N times C K K So there are how many terms here L goes from 0 to n minus r plus n, r plus s, okay. So just we are done. Now what I am going to do, 
So, is this clear? I have just pulled this outside and thus the reorganized. I have taken 1 by n and this quantity here. But now look at this. This is summation of how many terms here? L equals to 0 to n minus r plus s, right. So, what I will do is simply this n I will keep in the numerator n minus r plus s and n minus r plus s. I have just, just multiplied and divided by this term. Now, if you look at this quantity here, this is now average of n minus r plus s terms, right. So, there are how many terms? There are n minus r plus n terms and I am also dividing by the same number of amounts. Okay, now let us now let us apply our result. What would we say as n goes to infinity? If I let n goes to infinity and this guy j is null recurrent, what did I say? Where does this quantity goes to? Yeah, limit n tends to infinity. Where does this go? So this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and now as n goes to infinity you look at this there is n minus r plus s divided by n what does this ratio go to that ratio goes to 1 right because r plus n this is a constant term that does not add much and what does this ratio will go to this ratio is going to be same as limit as p k k l as sorry n as n goes to infinity right because you are just skipping some finite terms here if you look into the infinite summation of this divided by that uh, same number here this is going to be the limit of so this quantity is going to be the limit of p k k of n Okay, so this is going to be, let's say, goes to one to m, or maybe m goes to infinity. M goes to n equals to one to m. Okay, so this quantity is just going to this. So now we are. What we have shown is, as j goes to, sorry, as n goes to infinity, this term is going to be zero, and this term is one here, but this is going to be a positive quantity this last term is also going to be a positive quantity. In that case what we say this limit must be 0 right because this entire quantity is upper bounded by 0. So then what does this mean? The j is also the yeah, if j is re null recurrent then k is also null recurrent. So now last thing suppose now let us say if j is my positive recurrent it is because it cannot be transient or null recurrent. So, only option you are left with is positive recurrent. 